Thank you for joining us. My name is Yvonne Okwara Matole. Now, voters have spent the better part of the morning in Kajado Central constituency streaming into polling stations to vote for their next member of parliament. There have been varying reports about voter turnout. We will be joined by Ian Wafula, who has visited about five polling stations so far, and he'll be giving us an update on how that is proceeding in Kajiado Central. That is coming up a little later on in this bulletin, so do stick around for that. Let's give you the other top stories of the day today. The Kiambu County Assembly member who has been missing for a week was found in Kinungi on Sunday evening. Samuel Gitao, the Juja Ward MCA, is said to have escaped from the boot of his hijackers upon the interception of the vehicle. Police are yet to verify this account as the MCA is currently receiving treatment at the Aga Khan Hospital. This brings to an end a week-long search for the MCA who went missing on the 8th of March. Sunday night at the Aga Khan Hospital in Nairobi, family, friends and colleagues of the missing Kiambu MCA have come to receive their own who had returned after going missing for a whole week. Samuel Gitao went missing on the 8th of March from his home after he had gone to withdraw money from an ATM in Riru. He was Sunday night found alive in Kinungi area along the Nakuru Nairobi Highway. Gitao, who briefly spoke to the police, told them that he had been in a car boot all along. He was found at Kinungi. From their witnesses, they intercepted that car. When the boot opened, the MCA jumped from the, the vehicle and uh, the that who and uh, hijacked him escaped with a, a white motor vehicle. But police are yet to verify what exactly happened after the MCA recuperates and can be grilled. Gitao bears no external injuries but is said to have gone without food for the entire week he's been missing. <laughs> Gitao has been found just as the week-long search for him was turning frantic. Police said his car was found with the lights on and engine running just outside his gate when he disappeared, though it is not clear why he had left behind his mobile phone in the house. And as Gitao's family and colleagues remain cautiously optimistic regarding his health and safety, police are yet to report on whether this was a kidnap and why the MCA would have been a target. Sharma Mani, KTN. All right, now let's give you an update on what's happening in Kajiado Central constituency. Polls opened at 6 o'clock this morning and voters started streaming in to cast the ballot for the one that will represent them in the few uh, short, it's about two and a half years before we go into the next election, of course, following the resignation of Mkai Seri, who took up the post of Interior Cabinet Secretary. Some of that footage you're seeing there, I believe that's Kajado Township. Uh, that's the polling center that you're looking at. Um, the candidates, we understand, the three of them, that is Elijah Memusi of ODM. We have Kuntain Kashuma, who's an independent candidate, and Patrick Tutui of the Jubilee Alliance Party cast their votes early this morning. Um, now, some of the challenges that may be experienced in uh, these uh, voting uh, polling stations are literacy issues. I understand that was there in Miley Tisa, spoke to Ian Wafula a short time before we came on the air, talked about literacy issues in some of the polling stations. And of course, this is a typically nomadic community, but voter turnout has been much better than expected. Remember, the IEBC sent about 750 officials to this area to manage this by-election, 204 of them manning the security and about 102 presiding officers and deputy presiding officers as well. All of these uh, candidates, the three of them, vying for the hearts and minds of 39,545 registered voters. The voter turnout, of course, is something that will be very interesting. Whether that will mirror what happened during the nominations for both ODM and the Jubilee Alliance Party is something that we wait to see. <clears throat>
that will happen. Excuse me, in one of the centers, that's Il Bissell Primary School, over 300 residents had cast their ballot by around 8.30 this morning. As you can see, the queues still there. They're using the handheld electronic voter identification devices and then, of course, moving on to the manual register just to check that. And there have been no incidences that have no incidents reported as of now, but all seems to be going well. Of course, the polling centers will close at five, after which the counting will begin. When Patrick Tutui voted, he was accompanied by the Kajiado Senator Peter Moseset, the Kajiado South Member of Parliament Kato Olemetito, <coughs> excuse me, and Moses Olesakuda, who is the Member of Parliament for Kajiado North. He was also accompanied by Nairobi Senator Mike Mbuvi Sonko. He expressed um, his satisfaction with the voting process, saying it was smooth, and he said he would accept the outcome of the poll. Meanwhile, independent candidate Kuntain Kashuma cast his vote at Engalibo Primary School, that is in Mailitisa. Uh, there was a bit of a mix-up in the register at this station. It affected the voting exercise for a while as some voters were turned away, but we understand that was uh, sorted out. Um, and some of those who were turned away were not registered voters. So looks like the usual hiccups, but the voting is going on smoothly. As we said, Ian Wafula is there, and we will be uh, catching up with him to give us the details. He's been to five polling stations this morning so far, two in Kajiado Town, two in El Bissell, and one in Miley Tissa. We'll have the latest of this, so you want to keep it KTN for the very latest. Okay, let's take you to Baringo now, where tension remains high in Arabal and Kapinda Sum areas in Baringo Central after the Pokot invaded the area and evicted the Tugen in a tussle over pasture for their livestock. Dozens of police officers have been dispatched to the area following a directive two weeks ago by Deputy President William Ruto. Now, at least 10 schools have been closed in Baringo Central over insecurity. Pokot herders, who are said to have been armed, drove their livestock into areas occupied by the Tugen. They then allegedly vandalized the school, homes, and businesses and trading centers, forcing the Tugen to abandon their homes. Police who have set up camp in affected areas are working towards evicting the Pokot out of the land originally occupied by the Tugen. Waka wakapeba mapati, 106, na sasa atamena ishi sasa kwa masenta huko kama IDP. Hii kiti imefanyika last week, ya part one, kabla ya awa askari wenye wako hapa kukuja. Just one week before the iki. Na atuwe ni matumaini ya serikali kusaidia zizi. Na ata watoto yetu, karibu mashule 25 imefungwa. Kwa sababu hii ya shida hii. Kukuja kwa utu ni kudisplay watu. Ni heri ya tundi wanataa uishi. Si ya tenyazi. Iyo si nyazi. Na si maji. Kama inge kwa nyazi. Si wangia kula na wakae. Mbona tuliache wakule nyazi. Tukaache wakunyo maji. Lakini wanakunyo maji jioni wakirudisha. Wanafuga wana mtoni. Wanakuja kupelaka mali ya wenye. Let's give you an update now on the security situation in Mandera County. Four people were shot dead by gunmen in Mandera town last night three others were critically injured in the attack the attack comes just less than 48 hours since friday's attack on governor ali robbers convoy which left another three people dead mandara east deputy county commissioner elvis career has indicated that police are investigating who could be behind the attack it is still not clear who was behind sunday nights and friday morning attacks However, newly installed Inspector General of Police Joseph Boynet said investigations are ongoing. And back to the capital, cart operators here in Nairobi County today held a demonstration demanding that the county administration cater for the losses incurred when a county officer burnt their tools of trade on Friday last week. The operators also complained of harassment by the city council officers and now want Nairobi Governor Evans Kidero to allow them to operate in and around the CBD. This comes as the county assembly passed a law seeking to bar cart operators 
from accessing the central business district. They also claimed, they also refuted claims rather, that they have been causing traffic around the city as was claimed. Nifanya kazi yangu na jasho yangu Nikena kwa nyumba na kapaza kangu Wata kama ni miambili, mina furai Siku shikuwa na kanjo hapa leo na ambiwa toa dao Napena dao imagine Nandana nimepata miambili, sana shindua Ndafanya kazi ya kusumbuka Kutafutia wanaume wengine walisha familia yao Yani leo unasugulikia wanakula Na utuki wambia, leo unambiwa receipt ndio hii Unakata receipt, hii receipt unakata Tano kipata mungina njene ya anaka, anakata So the thing ni hii, wanataka tukule aje Hata kama tunapanga the burial of the late motorsport enthusiast Amir Mohammed is set for tomorrow. The late Amir was involved in a tragic road accident along the Kiambu Limuru Road yesterday morning. His friend, Jay Sonny, is still recuperating at the Aga Khan Hospital, where he was admitted moments after the fatal accident. Relatives, friends and fans have, over the last 24 hours, sent their messages of condolence, describing Amir as a passionate motor enthusiast who dedicated his life to motoring and community service. It is a sound that thrills a growing number of people in the country. The sound of speed. That is the fastest man. One person it did indeed thrill is Amir Mohammed, a motorsport enthusiast and one of the organizers of motor events in the country. The club is the brains behind Kiamburing Tamak Motorsports, which made its debut in 2013. Well, formally, these, these races started uh, sometime last year. So we've been, this is our third time here in Kiambu. It's beautiful, we have, uh, it's very scenic, we have good roads, uh, nice sweeping bends. But this Sunday morning, Amir's life would come to a tragic end as he was involved in a grisly road accident while en route to Nairobi from Limuru. Amir's vehicle rolled and burst into flames, killing him on the spot. The driver of the other vehicle, known as Jay Sonny, was badly injured and is admitted in Aga Khan Hospital's ICU unit. Pictures of the grisly accident scene made rounds on the social media, with people criticizing safety precautions taken by the underground motor event Kiamburing. But the organizers say Amir was not racing at the time of the accident and that Kiamburing plays by the rules. As a club, we really push for safety. Safety in terms of uh, any racing car should have the roll cage. Uh, people should observe no traffic and all that. In fact, it should be done in a closed circuit where there, there are no, it, the road is not open. Last year, the event had to be prematurely halted due to what the organizers deemed to be safety hazards. Yeah, we had a small problem with the spectators and uh, just the locals coming on the road in the middle of the race. And uh, because of that, we had to prematurely end the race. So a few drivers didn't manage to, to race, but hopefully we'll, we'll, it'll be better organized the, the next time and uh, yeah, to try and prevent this kind of uh, uh, occurrences. Amir was a director at the club TT Sports, the brains behind Kiamburing. The name Kiamburing was derived from the ring-shaped roads in Kiambu County, where the racing would take place. It is at these very rings that he met his death. The debris at the scene of accident shows how tragically Amir lost his life. Now the late Fast and Furious actor Paul Walker once said that if speed kills me, do not cry because I died smiling. Amir died doing what he loves and one can only hope that he too died smiling. Sharma Mani, KTN, in Muthaiga, Limuru. Very tragic there. May his soul rest in peace and we pray for the recovery of his friend there. We want to give you yet another update on the Mandera attack. Remember, uh, the Mandera governor survived a fifth attempt on his life when his convoy was attacked on Friday. And we've told you about the killings that took place yesterday. And the newly installed Inspector General of Police, Joseph Boynet, visited the area. And today in Parliament, members of Parliament from Mandera County are reacting to his visit. And uh, we have Aaron.
Kwan Ocheng, who's our parliamentary affairs reporter, who's in Parliament, joins us now by phone. Aaron, good afternoon. What are the members of Parliament saying? A very good afternoon to you, Yvonne. The members of Parliament from Mandera County are not happy with uh, Inspector General of Police uh, uh, following his uh, visit uh, to Mandera. Uh, simply because they're saying he comes to the attack as a banditry to terror attack. So they are saying from his tone, it looks like the magnitude of the attack is small, to, to, uh, according to him, for him to term it as a banditry. But all in all, they are also blaming the president and the deputy president, or they are saying this is uh, the sixth attack since the, um, the attack on the quarry. And uh, the president and the deputy have not found time, and they are comparing their visits to Pagliado several times. They've gone to Pagliado to campaign. They're saying, why would they even found time to go to Madeira and to assess the situation that is happening there? So they're saying enough, enough. They've been pushed to the wall. They think the government is not doing enough to address insecurity in Madeira, and they're saying they should be given a chance to constitute or form their own army composed of a youth from um, Mandela so that they can also try and uh, guard the area. Yvonne. All right, Aaron, uh, there were reports, of course, that uh, the governor and the senator had talked to the national government and raised the issue of security several times. What are the MPs saying about those attempts that were made to uh, inform the national government of what is happening in Mandera County? Well, the parliament are saying this is uh, like the third attempt that they've made to try and resolve this issue. And they've even had meetings with the president in State House. They've had meetings with the deputy president in Nairobi. And they've told them they know the cause of this problem. They, but the government seems reluctant. They are not acting. They are taking a testing point. There's a 200 kilometer stretch between uh, Damasa, a uh, town in, uh, in the northeast, and Damasa and Mandera, which is 200 kilometers. And according to Amazon agreement, that uh, stretch should be guarded by Ethiopian forces. So they are questioning why can't KDF be the ones guarding that area. And they're saying that could be the very, very point that uh, Al Shabaab are using to gain entry into Mandera. So in fact, they're saying they've done their part. They've explained to government the root cause. They know where the problem is. But uh, it's just that the government is a bit reluctant in addressing this matter. You know? All right, thank you very much for that. Aaron Ocheng, a parliamentary affairs reporter, talking to us from Parliament. Mandera members of Parliament are reacting to the visit by the Inspector General to the area yesterday. We'll continue to keep you updated on that, and Aaron will, of course, file a story on that and their reaction in our subsequent bulletins. Let's go to Kajiado Central now. Ian Wafula has been making the rounds to various polling stations this morning just taking a look at how that process is carrying on ian you've been to five polling stations what's the voter turnout been like what's the mood been like in fact Yvonne, um yeah up to around a few minutes ago the iabc indeed confirmed that the voter turnout as at this point is around uh, 50 percent this is quite low, they are saying, uh, but having spoken to a number of presiding officers at the five uh, polling stations that we've gone to, they are saying that they are expecting the numbers to increase later on in the afternoon. Remember that today is, an, is a weekday, and so majority of the people are, are either at work or they have also opted to just, you know, go on with their daily businesses. Otherwise, generally, the whole uh, election process is going on well, except for one primary school, that was Engabu, Engal, Engelau Primary School, which is about 30 kilometers kilometers away from Kajiado Central, uh, the officers there were concerned that majority of the people who are showing up did not have, um, could not trace their names on uh, the uh, registry books and also on the biometric system. But this, they blame it to illiteracy because most of the people could not remember where they registered themselves, the polling stations in which they registered themselves. So that is just one of the main challenges that was coming up. Also, Yvonne, we also managed to witness uh, three of the candidates uh, voting at their various places, and one important thing that uh, that, three, that came across from um, them casting their vote is that they said this is a peaceful process they are not expecting that anything will come out of it and each one of them was ready to accept whatever the results um, that was coming uh, uh, was going to whatever the results they were going to get of course Yvonne the voting process is continuing here up
up until 5 p.m. when only the people who are on the line at around 5 p.m. will be allowed to vote in. Otherwise, um, tallying starts at 5 p.m., which will be done at the Maasai Training Institute, which is where uh, the main tallying center is. All the results shall be transmitted electronically to the Maasai Training Institute. Uh, remember, this will be provisional results up until the returning officer announces the final results. Yvonne? All right, thank you. Just a quick one before we let you go. You're talking about transmission of the results. Earlier on on Morning Express, Michael Gitonga had talked about network issues in that area. Is that something that might pose a challenge when it comes to transmitting the results later on? Well, uh, speaking to the returning officer, that is Maurice Ligulu, he said as of yesterday, they had tested all these uh, electronic uh, devices and they were certain they would not uh, break down. But um, one, one thing is sure is that they have a backup. Should these uh, results not be able to be transmitted electronically, they will use the six, uh, Form 16A to uh, take the results to the, uh, to the uh, returning officer, that is at the Maasai Training Institute. Thanks for staying with us. The government has reiterated the need to restructure Mumia's sugar before any money can be pumped in to salvage the beleaguered sugar miller. Speaking in Bungoma County, Deputy President William Ruto said the miller suffered from years of systemic management inefficiencies that had led to its poor performance. Two weeks ago, Mumia's announced a 2.1 billion shillings half-year loss on the back of declining revenues. The government has hired audit firm KPMG to undertake a restructuring program for the sugar miller. Now, as part of the efforts to weed out corruption, the government has already recommended the halving of the number of directors at Mumias, as well as the sacking of 300 employees. In 2014, Mumias managing director Cotas Otolo had indicated that Mumias needed to lay off close to a thousand employees to run efficiently. Last week, the deputy president announced that he had structured and approved a bailout plan for Mumias that included 1 billion shillings from the government and 4 billion shillings to be raised through a rights issue. Making sure that the sugarcane industry does not collapse. Na tayari mwaka uliopita tulituma hapa kwa Mumias shilingi million miatisa last year. Lakini hiyo pesa ilitumika kwa njia ambayo sio sawa sawa. Sasa mwaka huu tumesema tayari tumepanga tuko na 1 billion ya kuweka katika hiyo factory ya Mumias. Lakini mbele ya sisi kuweka pesa katika hiyo factory wezi wote walio huko ndani lazima watoke. Ndio masili. Haiwezekani tuchukue pesa ya umma tukuje tulishe wakora ambao wanakaa katika factory kule. All right, so that's all the news we had for you. Remember to keep it our websites www.standardmedia.co.ke and at KTN Kenya for the latest updates. Now, I understand it is Edith Kimani's tradition to leave you with an interesting fact. Um, seeing as I'm new to this, I'll talk about what I know very well, which is chicken. <laughs> so the longest recorded flight of a chicken was 13 seconds, just 13 seconds. All the better so we can catch them and eat them. My name is Yvonne Okwara Matole. Have a very good afternoon. Keep it KTN.